You may think as you're watching that I'm getting shorter and I am getting older, but it's because I'm leaning back because we're getting kind of down to the end of the deal here. Jake, let's talk about these 3A teams. I guess they're 3As or 2As. I still don't quite know. La Villa and Santa Maria, I do know, are in the same district. What can you tell me about those guys? Well, La Villa lost uh, probably the best player on their team, one of the best players on the team in, in Moron when he left for West Lake Yeah, that's a downer, huh? Yeah, it hurts. But, look, La Villa always does. They've been tough, man. They, they do what they do. Yeah, they, they do, do man. Ball. They do. So, look, you're gonna have to, any team that plays them is going to have to spread it out. They're going to have to have uh, corners that can cover, mm -hmm. linebackers that can cover receivers. Mm -hmm. And, you know. Because they're big seven-on-seven seven guys. Yeah. Are they good again this year? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, think like this. Uh, they've got. They've got. They know what they do. Mm -hmm. They're gonna pass, and uh, you know if they put up the numbers that they always do, it seems like, then uh, they'll they'll be fine. I think Santa Maria's got some weapons too, and I know that team's anxious to get to play La Villa. It's gonna be a tough muster for them. There are other teams. Ben Bolt is in the district, and they got that kid Ryan Galvan, who's a great quarterback. I mean, Ben Bolt's gonna be tough. But these other teams, Three Rivers is fair. Uh, Riviera was one and nine last year, and in Corpus Christi, London, they didn't even play last year. Yeah. So I feel like you know, I feel like uh, for Santa Maria, they have a chance to make a good showing in that league. Yeah, they didn't even have prime time running them. God, but yeah, I mean, look, I like I like these uh, these districts for us down here because yeah. our teams down here. They always play well. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen a game at Lavia, you need to go. It's fun. We've, we've actually Santa Rosa. Game there before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So this, yeah, you know, if you can go to the Sugar Bowl, well, that's know. a great thing. I'm actually working on this basketball book now, talking about some of those great basketball games between Santa Rosa and Lavia. Those teams were tough back in the day, man. They could beat three and four and five A's. Wow. Now, Lyford, speaking of Lyford, speaking of Santa Rosa, them and Lyford in the same district, mm -hmm. and, and Lyford didn't move up. Right. So because they just they don't have the population that they've uh, to to grow. So it's great for them. They got to stay there, and they're one of the bigger schools in their district. It's like those five A's that stayed in five. They didn't have to move up, and so they're going to have a pretty good shot. And that's another team like PSJ North, like Rio Hondo. These teams that have been good for some time and that didn't have a good season, they're like, no, 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 no. Wait a minute, we're going to stop this right now. So I think the factors are aligned for the Bulldogs to be pretty good. Yeah, I do too. Um, I, I like, I like, uh, I like them because I like their defense. Uh, Eloy Perez, who, who uh, I used to work with, he's running a hybrid out there, kind of like West Virginia used to run, three, three, five. And so they've got. Like, they don't have big guys, so they get after the ball. They got they've got fast guys that can cover the field. Cord Castro. That's one of the best names around. It's not quite a Maverick, but it's a good name, and so we'll keep an eye on that kid. He's about 180. He's a hitter, from what I understand. Lifer should be better. Now, uh, Santa Rosa, man, they got a player that everybody needs to know about. This Wally Olivares is a, is a two-way all-district player. He's a tough little guy, man. Yeah, and look, uh, right away they're going to play. Uh, they're playing Lifer for weeks. Yeah, yeah, and so that sets the tone. The other teams in the district are these: Bishop. Foul Furious were about 500 last year. Uh, neither one's that great. San Diego's been good, and they got the running game to beat all running games. They're like Zapata was a couple of years ago. But the best team is the Rams' pass. I don't mm -hmm. know how that came to pass. Get it? That's good. <laughs> so what happens is, okay, you got Life in Santa Rosa. The winner sets the tone. Then here's the problem. Uh, you know, Life and Santa Rosa both have to go on the road for some of their tough games. Mm -hmm. So they need to beat one of them needs to beat the other, which is obviously going to happen. There ain't no ties anymore. Whoever wins that opening game should be in good shape. Yeah, and these are games like uh, like you've seen in the Midwest where you actually have to travel. You know, it's not a five minute yeah, drive yeah. from Edinburgh to PSA North. Yeah, like Odessa going all the way to wherever. Yeah, yeah. Th these are these are or the Dakotas, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, think about it like this. You know, these guys they're getting in the bus early in you know early in the day. They're on the bus all day. These games mean a lot because they, they put so much time in. It. Like I mean, nobody wants to drive three hours. <laughs> no, that's a long drive on the way back, man. You know, I hate. I used to hate being on the bus with a losing team. It's like oh, you can't even jack around. You get yelled at. You'd be run on Monday, <laughs> and with good reason. Yeah, yeah but it's going to be an interesting district. I, you know, I like uh, I like Lifer's chances. I like uh, uh, Santa Rosa's chances. But uh, you know, look, it's a it's a tough district when you have to travel as much as they do. One of them's going to have to beat the Rams' pass. I hope they can do it. Uh, that team used to be pretty good in basketball, too. Now, the only other teams I'm thinking of, we've got Monte Alto. Boy, talk about some population growth. I've got them in Division Two at 3A. That's, uh, that's a, quite a step up in competition for them. They've been actually pretty decent. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I hear the numbers aren't as great as they were the year before, but that's, yeah. that's something you're always going to see in a small school. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if, they, if, you know, if their numbers are right and they can keep people healthy, you know, I, I think they can they can do damage. I mean, they're getting talent. It's not like they don't have talent. They're getting, oh, they got talent, man. They, They've had know. talent for, 
for decades, man, all going to other schools like yeah. Ed Cows. Here's let me. I, what I like to do here early in the season is kind of you know go over who's doing what to whom. In that district, Monte Alto, the Blue Devils. You should like them because he likes Duke. Cotula, Freer, Dilly, and Hebronville. I can tell you right now that Hebronville is set for a big year. Okay. They're, they're a good ball club. Uh, now, Cotula, you know who was a school teacher at Cotula in his early 20s? Lyndon Baines Johnson. That's your history lesson for the day, and it means absolutely nothing to football. That's, he's a president, for those of you guys who don't really. Indeed. Uh, from Texas. Freer used to be a great team back in the mm -hmm. 70s. They sent a bunch of guys on to UT, but they don't have much. So I feel like Monte Alto should be tough. They can beat those other three teams. Dilly? Dilly's not that good. They are, they are a deserted Dairy Queen. <laughs> I hope they don't get it out there. Anyway, so that's the other team. St. Joe lost a lot of weapons, man, but you know what? They've been pretty good lately. Daniel Matar is a name to remember there. Good linebacker. Now, uh, I can't say, like, it's a rumor right now, but they're going to get a, there, There's a good chance that St. Joe's could get uh, a very good running back. Yeah. Maybe coming back to the Valley. So, um, we don't know yet, but uh, it's a chance. There's a chance that they get him. Wouldn't that be interesting? Boy, you take a guy who was a 5A running back, from what I understand, and put him at the St. Joe. Boy, the, the number's potential is amazing. Yeah, and that's if that happens. If they don't, they're, they're going to be just fine because... Uh, they've got they've got a good team. I mean, look, their offense is always uh, something. And special. they've got an established coach down there, man. Christian does a great job. They got continuity down there. Yeah, I feel like they're enjoying playing football. I'm enjoying keeping up with their exploits. We got one thing left to talk about here on the show. We're going to come back and take the briefest of looks at the first week of Valley football because it's right on the way. Don't go away. <laughs> 